All right, so the first shade is Pluto, and these are very, very soft. I'm gonna go across like this. So first shade is Pluto. I like it because it's an icy white. Next shade is Titan, which is that matte vanilla I truly, truly love. Next shade is Alien, and it's like that really nice green, like a lime green. Interstellar, it's like a pale, pale, like gold with a little bit of a shift to it. Like it's a, it's, it's like a really pale gold. And then let me get the next four. I love how creamy they feel. Next four. So this shade is Abduction. This is a matte lime green, almost like citron. UFO, which is a gold. Gravity which is a nice transition shade. And then this one is Martian Soil, which this one is actually like a true mustard shade, which I really have had a hard time looking for in a palette. I feel like it's not, it's too yellow or it's too this, so I feel like this is a nice true mustard yellow. Next shade is Flying Saucer, which is a matte green. I love that one because it's got a little bit of teal to it. Then Phone Home, which is a mauve. Moon Rock, it's almost like a, like a, I don't know, what do you call it, like a dirty teal gold, I don't know what to, how to describe it, but it's really interesting. And then you have X-Files, which is almost like a gray brown. Then you're getting into the darker shades, um, Ghost OG, which is a dark matte gray. Um, Area 51, which is a matte purple. Now this one was not my favorite because it's a little chalkier and drier. Um, and then the Space Cowboy, a nice dark metallic brown. And then there's Probe, which is your standard teal with kind of like a shift to it or like, you know, that it's like, a, what is it called? Teal, what is it called? Like that pink, brown color, teal brown color um, that MAC had gotten a long time ago. Now the next two I cannot fit on my arms, so the next two is Tall Gray. That one did not show up that well. I feel like that one's not quite there, but it's in like a true gray. And then Black Hole, which is a black. That one kind of skipped a little bit. Blacks are very hard to make. All right, so there are all the colors for the alien palette. So now I'm going to zoom you in and get you very close and that way I can kind of talk you through my tutorial. I'm going to start off with my Becca primer. Um, it's moisturizing and I feel like it's perfect for those palettes that have a lot of pigment because sometimes I feel like the pigment just doesn't show um, up the way I want it to or blend without moisturized um, eyes. And this is actually designed for your under eye but you can take it over the lid. All right so Let's get into the palette. So usually I will set it with like the vanilla shade. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just grab Titan, which is right here, which I've been using a lot. And I'm just going to take it just into the crease, just to kind of start it off, but not completely set the entire eye. Then I'll go into um, Gravity which is that perfect transition shade. And this has just been my base colors that I've been using a lot. And I feel like they get the job done. And that's what you want. Then I'll go back into Titan, which is this one. Again, it's the vanilla shade. I'm just gonna get a little bit so that I can kind of blend out those edges. Then I will get uh, Martian Soil, which is that mustard shade. I've been actually I haven't used that one yet, so I want to use it. I'm going to add this to the look I've been doing. Look at that, it's really, really nice. And I usually like to take out the crease all the way out here because then I can crisp it up later. But look at that, that's really nicely blending. And then I'll go back into, I'm just cleaning off my brush with my color switch 
and then um, go back into tighten and just kind of soften that line a little more. So now that I've got those laid down, I'm actually going to start building the black. Um, I'm going to use Ghost OG, which is this darker um, gray, and I'm going to take just a blending brush, like kind of like a um, something like this. This one is from Luxie Beauty. It's the 121. Very small. That way I can concentrate it a little more. Pick up the color and go in. So I just kind of want to create the shape, blend it out a little bit. I know I've been having a little bit of issue with this gray. I feel like you just have to be very careful building it. But once you get it built, it's not bad. And I always blow out my crease like monstrous. Alright, then I'll go in back with uh, Martian Soil, that mustard color. Take my big blending brush and just kind of go on top and blend out those, the edges a little bit. And don't worry about if this edge is messy because you're going to crisp that up anyways. Alright, now I'm going to take Black Hole, which is the um, black shade, and just darken out my outer corner just a little more with that same brush. Just kind of blending and softening those edges, making sure it's not too much. Ghost OG again. and just kind of start blending out those edges. Don't worry if it's messy on the outer portion. And then of course pick up Martian soil and just go through. There's going to be a lot of yellow in this look. I want that yellow to really pop. And just kind of buff, buff, buff. It's so okay if it's not perfectly blended, you're just working on it right now. I feel like the way these colors are, they're very pigmented, so it's very hard to get it to blend out. You just have to kind of press and blend, press and blend. And I feel like that is the best method I can find. I'm going to take Tall Gray, which is this um, lighter gray color, and with my clean... I put my color switch away. Need that back. Clean off that gray and then just go back in and just kind of apply it where you want it and then go back with ghost fog and then blend it through. Then I'll clean off my brush again and then take Martian soil with that same brush. And just go and soften it. There is a lot of blending involved in this palette, at least with the look I'm creating, just because it's they're very pigmented, but you want that because you want, I mean, for me, if I have to work for a palette, like not work hard, but you know, like kind of work the colors in and then see how they marry together, then I feel like it's worth it. Like I, sometimes I do like one that's easy, one and done, but I, f I like this this way. Okay, I'm cleaning off my brush again, taking Titan, popping that in my brow bone, so it's a little messy, but that way I can kind of pop that brow bone just a little bit more. Now I'm going to take um, UFO, which is this antique gold shade with my finger, because I love using my finger for this, and I'm going to pop it. Right there. Such a pigmented color, so you really don't need much. And then take Ghost Fog again, which was that darker gray, and just kind of marry that into the gold. 
and of course kind of bring that crease in a little more. Okay, liking the way it's coming. All right, now I'm going to just take a makeup wipe and I'm going to crisp up the edges. Just like that. All right, so I did the rest of my makeup off camera. Um, I do need to blend here though, so I'm just kind of taking that brush and bringing that Um, Martian soil. I didn't add additional product, but I'm just going to bring it inwards a little bit. Kind of doing a little Jeffree Star thing going on, bringing that crease way up into the brow bone. Um, so now I'm going to use um, Area 51, which I've been using. This one's the purple shade. Very interesting purple. Um, it's not quite like it's a true purple, but it's a little drier, and I'm pretty sure it's really hard to make that perfect purple. So I'm just taking my Tarte blending brush. And I'm just gonna pop this on the lower lash line. Then I will take Phone Home, which is that mauve shade. It's kind of in that purple family. And blend out those edges. I'm going to take um, Flying Saucer and I'm going to pop it right under here. I just want to pop of that green and just kind of blend it downward. Sorry into the purple. Grab a little bit more of Area 51. Blend it in with the green. I will take Pluto, which is that shimmery shade. Do the old pop in the inner corner thing that I love doing. See, I feel like the purple's a bit patchy. Do you see it? Purples are a little hard to deal with, but um, this one is, is kind of tough, and I, and I understand why, because it's very hard to make that matte purple shade, so I'm just going to try and deepen it just a little more. It's a little better. All right, so that eye is done. Not the best. <laughs> I really wanted that green just to match with my hair. It's not the best on my lower lash line. I feel like it's very patchy, so I'm not liking that very much so. But I'm gonna finish my eyes off camera and then let you know what this combination, I did use some of this combination before, but how it turned out this time, I'll let you know what my overall thoughts are. So I just finished filming one video and I need to finish filming this one because I wanted to do a demonstration. Um, is this a good palette? Yes, I feel like it is. It's very interesting, very unique compared to the other palettes. You've got blood sugar that's all reds. You've got androgyny that's got jewel tones. You've got thirsty that has brights and very shimmery pretty shades. And then you have the alien that has more cool. So I feel like this is very unique, something that I don't have in my collection. I actually really, really enjoyed this palette. It was a little tough to blend those edges out because I know grays and blacks are very hard to do. That mustard shade really married it together. I absolutely love this mustard shade. I'm in love with it. It's so pretty and it's so creamy. Look how pigmented that is. So beautiful. And this is the first time I'm actually using the mustard shade. I wanted to incorporate it with the looks that I've been coming up with and incorporate it. And it really did change this look a lot. I kind of want to pick up some more of that mustard shade and bring her a little bit more in the inner corner right here. I feel like she needs more action. Like, I love it. I love how unique this palette is. Oh, look at that. 
perfect. Um, I love how unique this palette is. The purple is my least favorite. It didn't really blend and it's not as, it's kind of chalky and dry. I don't like the way it feels to the touch. It's not as blendable as you can see. Can you see that? It's not as blendable as the mustard shade. It kind of just stains. So it's not my favorite shade in the palette. The black is really pigmented. Ghost OG is very pigmented. I feel like all these shades are very nice. The green is perfect. Just one swipe and boom, you've got a pop of color. I love Phone Home. That one's my favorite. UFO, just whoop, and you're done. Pluto, so pretty. I actually used it as a highlight. Look at that. Um, I love this palette. I just hate the purple in the palette. I hate that color. And I don't typically say that about purples. It's not a good color. I just don't like it. Um, no. Not for me. So if this color were gone, I would like the palette even more. Maybe add another metallic in there or maybe um, something else. I don't know. Um, it's not my favorite color in the palette. Mm, I won't be using it that often, but I don't know. Maybe I'll try another look for you guys and use that purple on my entire eye. I don't know for sure. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you learned something. And yes, I really do recommend this palette if you can get your hands on it. It's a very good palette. Jeffree Star palettes are very high quality. I feel like they do the job. I feel like they are very... Uh, there's a lot you can see craftsmanship in it and that's what I look for in brands I know not a lot of people like Kat Von D um, but she does put good quality product out there they have been a little lackluster for me but I did love her latest one was Lolita I love that palette um, I feel like her holiday palettes are afterthoughts so they're not as good as like those little ones that she does so I hope she can continue doing like Lolita size pastel goth and the Divine palette, like those were good quality palettes, but the big ones she makes, they're not as good quality. As far as Jeffree Star, you could see the evolution in his palettes and they actually go really well and they're actually very, very good. The quality just keeps getting better. So I am excited to see what else he has in store. I've never tried Jeffree Star products, but once I tried Blood Sugar, I had to have Thirsty, had to try Androgyny, had to have Alien. Well, I asked my husband, can I have an Alien palette for Christmas? He's like, sure. So I like that. And then I don't have the Beauty Killer palette. So I'm wondering what that is like. So I might find that one on their website and just kind of see what that looks like. And if you want to see a video on that, I can definitely um, insert that video as well. I'm so sorry, guys. I've been kind of lackluster in my posting. I'm just very uh, tired from holiday. I work retail, so it's very, very tough for me to do it. Um, and I'm trying my best. So bear with me. Thank you guys so much for watching my video and if you um, have any suggestions on what else I need to try, I haven't tried Jeffree Star's liquid lipstick so I'm kind of curious about that. Um, let me know if you've tried the Jeffree Star liquid lipsticks. I think that might be my next one to look at um, as well. So thank you guys so much. See you in my next video. Bye!